Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the basics of compound probability, um, but they've been kind of contrived examples. We've looked at dice, we've looked at cards, and these are definitely ways you can apply probability in, say, a casino, but probability has a lot more applications outside of these places. So uh, we're going to look at an example dealing with a sports statistic, so we'll start getting into some more STEM-related examples that will be kind of cross-curricular here. Um, but let's say that we have a sports player, and I'll use the stats for uh, Michael, Jor Michael Jordan. And we're going to talk about basically Michael Jordan's percentages for making a free, free throw. And doing a little research, you can do this with any NBA player. You can do this with your own free throw stats to figure this out. But um, Michael Jordan's free throw percentage was at 82%, or 0.82 would have been the probability there. So that being his probability, we can then calculate, let's say that Michael Jordan gets fouled at the end of the game, and his team's down two points, and he needs to tie it up. Or maybe his team's down one point, and they're trying to win the game. And we want to find the probability that he makes both of these foul shots in a row. So using what we know about compound probability, we have to decide if this is an and problem or an or problem. And to do that, another way we could kind of write this probability is we could say, what's the probability that... Michael Jordan makes the first shot, and then he makes the second shot. And if we write it that way, we can quickly see that this is going to be an and problem. And we know with and problems, we have to multiply. So let's go ahead and check this out here. So if I want to find the probability that Michael Jordan is able to help his team win the game by making two shots in a row, what I'm going to have to do is take this 0.82 times another 0.82. This is the multiple, another way to write the multiplication symbol, not to be confused with a decimal point. Uh, and if we take that, so if we sit there and we punch this in our calculator, if we take 0.82 times 0.82, we're going to end up with a probability of 0.672. And I'll round that to three decimal places. But if we were to write that as a percentage, just so you could see, that would be a 67.2% chance. So if he were to do this, you know, a hundred times, we'd expect about 67 times he'd be able to win the game, and then the other 33 times he would probably not be able to win the game. Now, this is assuming also that he doesn't get better at free throw shots. Let's check another one. What if the, what's the probability that he makes three in a row? And a good thing to think about, just on your own before we get to this, is do we expect this percentage to be higher or lower? Do we expect this to be easier to happen or harder to happen, and why? And as you might guess, so this is the common mistake here is people put 0.82 times 3, but this is going to be 0.82 times itself three times. 2 times 0.82. And if we take 0.82 times itself three times, we're going to end up with about point. Again, I'm rounding this off here a little bit. 0.551, which is a 55.1% chance. So we can see here it's you know almost a coin flip, maybe a little bit better than a coin flip that if he's got to make uh, three foul shots in a row to win the game, maybe he gets fouled at the three-point line, um, that he'd be able to actually pull that out and win. And we can see that between these two probabilities, this first probability is actually a good bit higher than the second one. And that's because in an and problem, anytime you're multiplying a bunch of decimals together, like here I have any decimal that's between 0 and 1, if I keep multiplying that together, I'm going to end up or end up getting a smaller number. So if you multiply two decimals between 0 and 1, you're going to end up getting a smaller number than you originally started with. Uh, and that's kind of how it happens. And also, it's, got, it's harder for him to make three in a row than it's going to be to make two in a row. So we can see that that probability is going down. Okay, let's say we're rooting for the other team now. Let's say that we hope that, you know, our team wins the game and Michael Jordan misses two in a row. Now, you have to be a little careful here because the probability we're dealing with up top here, where it says the probability of making a shot is 0.82, we're actually going to first need to find out what's the probability he misses a shot. So what's the probability... He misses a shot. And to do that, if there's a point or uh, an 82% chance that he makes the shot, if we take 100%, so that's all the possible things that could happen, minus 
the 82%, which is going to be the chance he makes it, the leftover percentage will be the chance that he misses. So in this case, that should be 18%. He's either going to make the shot or miss it. And those two percentages, 82 and 18, should add up to 100%. So now that we've got that 18%, we're ready to do what we did before. We need to find the probability that he misses times the probability that he misses again. And to do that, we'll take 0.18 times 0.18. Okay, we'll go ahead and check this out. And that should give us a 0 0.0324 probability which is the same as a 3.24% chance. Very small chance that if you were hoping, you know, if you needed him to miss both those shots to win the game, or excuse me, miss both the shots to win the game, uh, it would be a very, very small chance that that happens. Uh, and sports people have used these types of statistics um, throughout basketball and different things to help them make decisions. In fact, uh, the famous basketball player Shaquille O'Neal, they found out that he was a really bad free throw shooter, but he was very, very good at slam dunking it in your face and uh, making making close shots in. So what they would do is they would foul him, and they calculated something called expected value, which I don't really uh, have time for to get into this video, and it's not necessarily an Algebra 1 topic either. It's more of a statistic problem. They basically calculated that he was uh, going to score fewer points a game if you fouled him rather than if you actually let him shoot. So they called it hack-a-shack. They would always foul him before he got to make a shot. So again, this is how you can use probability in the example of basketball. Good little link here. And you can do this with any player's statistics. You can do it with your own statistics as well to find out probabilities. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk about some different things coming up here in some of the future videos.